Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Dan Richard Fishing. And today I want to talk to you guys about bass fishing. So smallmouth bass fishing in late summer, fall. Okay, we're going to talk about the essentials. Uh, and what's really cool about this video is very, very genuine. So you're going to actually see in a pinch, what do I put together to go bass fishing? And the reason why this is really, really legitimate and why this is the honest to God truth about what I use is because um, Sunday we were supposed to go fishing. I was supposed to go fishing with um, someone new um, that I was recently introduced to on, uh, on the old internet. And so we were gonna go fishing together in a new area that he, that he fishes quite a bit. And uh, so the plan was Sunday, we're gonna go fishing. So Saturday night, I had to pull all my stuff out of the boat and out of all my boxes and everything and put together a few rigs that I would bring with me on his boat because we weren't, we weren't gonna use my boat. So I had to go light. So I really had to get just sort of the essentials for smallmouth fishing. So basically, I got everything ready. I got my tackle bag right here. I loaded it up, I got my rods ready, and to be honest with you, I actually called and said, like, do you mind if I bring seven rods? Um, so you can still do this with just like three or four rods, even just three, but uh, just for the sake of not tying stuff, I wanted to be quicker. So he's like, yeah, yeah, no problem. Wake up Sunday morning, and Sunday morning at five o'clock, we've got wind gusts of 40 to 60 knots. So guys, that's like on the big, big river areas that we have, that can be like five foot waves, six foot waves, and our smaller boats just can't handle those kind of waves. So, um, and it was against current, which is even worse. So we unfortunately had to make the call to just cancel the fishing trip. It wasn't safe. Uh, so we said, forget it and we'll try again next time. So <clears throat> everything just sort of stayed at the front door and I figured, hey, let's do a video. So I figured I'd put together a video for you guys and show you what exactly I put together. And we'll go through one by one and these are really gonna be the essentials of what you need for smallmouth fishing uh, in late summer and in fall. And this is all the stuff I'm gonna use right up until the snow starts falling in December, okay? So this will give you a great idea. And, uh, and again, like I mentioned, I will show you what I put in the tackle bag as well, uh, sort of the extra baits and things like that that I brought. Um, and this is my Wild River uh, tackle bag, really cool bag. I'll have links in the description below to everything you see here. So hopefully you enjoy the video. Let's, uh, let's get to it so I'm not talking for the next two hours. Okay, so let's talk about the number one pick. What is the first thing that I'm gonna pack. Like this is for sure, for sure gonna come along and any of you guys watch my videos, you know it's gonna be the drop shot. Now, the drop shot rod that I've got here, whoa, look out, I don't wanna break anything. Um, I recently had an incident, so you guys have seen, I did a drop shot video, like a one hour long video on all things drop shot and the rod that was featured in there was my St. Croix um, drop shot rod, my tournament legend rod, which went for a swim. So that's gone. I captured on video and no, I didn't post it. So I've actually changed up now to a uh, Akuma TCS rod. So this is a TCS rod. Now these are the TCS rods. These are the Scott Martin signature rods. And this one here is actually made for drop shot. I actually think it says drop shot. Yeah, it actually says drop shot finesse right on it. Um, so this is a longer rod. Now typically I use, um, before I was using a shorter rod, like a six foot 11. This is actually a seven foot two medium light. You can use me, uh, lights for drop shot. I've talked about this before, but because I fish in the river and we got heavy current, I use heavier weights, like three quarter ounce, half ounce. I went ahead and uh, I use a medium light. So this is my rig uh, and I actually have the weight on here already. Got my drop shot hook, which is a Gamakatsu drop shot one odd hook and uh, it's ready to go. So that is rig number one, the drop shot. Okay, let's go to rig number two. Rig number two, of course, is going to have to be the Ned Rig, no small mouth fisherman will not have the Ned Rig. So this is my Ned Rig right here. And uh, basically I'm using an Accurist uh, reel. Here we go, this is an Accurist PT reel. Uh, unfortunately the little bait holder on my rod broke off so I have to just kind of put it on the reel like this. So I've got an Accurist PT and uh, on there I've got a, an Akuma rod as well. This is a Helios rod. Um, this actually cost me quite a bit, but you don't need anything too fancy schmancy. And this is again a uh, seven foot two rod, I believe, seven foot even. So this is a seven foot um, medium fast tip rod. And uh, this does a great job. I absolutely love this thing with uh, anything that's kind of a, uh, a smaller, a smaller Ned rig, like a Ned rig or a smaller shaky head, things like that. This is a great setup. So Ned rig for sure. That's, gotta, that's number two. 
Okay, number three is going to be a unweighted finesse rig. So this is on a spinning reel again, um, and I've got a Fluger uh, President reel on here. I've had this reel forever, and uh, and on this guy, it's an Akuma rod as well. Um, this is just an EVX rod, very inexpensive rod. Doesn't cost very much. It's under 100 bucks Canadian, so not very expensive. And on here, I've got a uh, four rod hook with the, uh, with the little spring lock. And on here, I will use flukes and I will use uh, Senkos and any, any other little light baits that I wanna throw around, so anything chunky. Um, but basically anything I wanna use unweighted will go on here. And this is great for when I wanna get up there and fish some flats, um, some weed edges and very shallow water. I'll just throw it up current, let it just drift through those areas. And this is just a phenomenal way to do it. Um, and all of these rods, by the way, you'll notice that all of them have braid. Um, I pretty much use braid on everything. Um, and anywhere between 25 to 35 pound braid, uh, this is probably 20 or 25 on this guy. And uh, I use 10 to 12 pound floral leaders. This particular one doesn't because I was fishing dirty water, but that is what I like to use. So some kind of a, some kind of an unweighted, you know, four odd or five odd way to go uh, for some of that, uh, some of that light action where you don't want to get on the bottom. You want to just kind of float it through structure. This is phenomenal. Okay. So those are my top three. After that, I would recommend one more rod. Okay. After that, it can be almost a duplicate of this particular setup and just attach different baits to it. So you only really need four to, to really get the job done, at least for me. You know, some people are fine with just one or two rods, but for me, I don't, I don't like retying all the time. So I do wanna have a medium heavy rod. And to that medium heavy rod, I will create uh, several different combos. So this would be number four, but we're gonna divide it into different rods, all right? So let's check it out. So if you've only got four rods, and uh, that fourth one is gonna be your medium heavy rod, which, th which this is, it's a Triumph X from St. Croix that I actually got on special. Um, by the way, really quick note, I am not a diehard of one particular rod. Um, I am enjoying the Akuma uh, Signature Series, the TCS rods that Scott Martin used to, uh, used to sell quite a bit. Um, I really enjoy them, they're super sensitive, they're very light, good price point, but I will buy rods on special, I will try all kinds of different brands, so I'm not really dedicated to one or the other, so don't feel like you have to get these exact same rods. Um, cause you know, any medium heavy rod with a fast or extra fast tip, which is what this is, will will do the job great. And my medium heavy rods are all between seven, uh, seven foot and seven foot four. So, um, I'm not one of those guys that's super picky. It's like, well, it's gotta be a seven foot two for this and a seven foot four for that. Like I'm just not that precise and not that anal about it. So don't feel like you got to get this exact same rig. Okay. And, uh, yeah, so I've got a, a Shimano Sitica on here. And of course the quintessential, the absolutely necessary bait when it comes to smallmouth, and that's a tube. If you're not fishing a tube in the fall, y'all are crazy, okay? This is like, so if you've only got four rods and this is gonna be your medium heavy, the first thing you're gonna tie on here, it's gotta be a tube, okay? If the tube doesn't work, you can switch to other things, but you absolutely need the tube, okay? So we start off with the tube, and this particular tube here is a Lunker Hunt Revealer Tubes. Those are my absolute favorite tubes. I've tried different ones, but I love these. I love the contrasting colors uh, that are in the tail. Just really, really cool. And then I'll show you uh, what a pack looks like. But yeah, so this is this rod, and these Triumph X is beat up. I mean, I have squashed, even right now, look, I might even break this off, let's see, hopefully not, there we go. I got an eye that's bent, because it's been stepped on, but yeah, phenomenal rod, and of course, this is a great setup. So tube, absolutely make sure you have a tube. If you don't have a tube, a drop shot, and an Ed rig, don't even go in the boat, okay? You're not even, you're not ready. You're not ready for smallmouth in the fall. <laughs> Okay, next up, uh, again, on a medium heavy setup, this is a Shimano Crucial now, that's what's on this particular rod, and I've got a, uh, I'm pretty sure this is a KVD reel. Yep, this is a KVD PT, which is, stands for Performance Tune, KVD reel that I bought on special. Um, and you know what, guys, this thing casts like a beast. This is probably the cheapest reel I own, and it casts like a beast, I love it. And on this guy, I've got 35 pound braid, I've got a 15 pound floro leader, and uh, I've got a, uh, what is this? I think this is a Lunker Hunt bladed bait. So it's like, a, it's a kind of chatter bait that's made by Lunker Hunt. You can check that out. And uh, I've got a trailer. I've got a little four inch, I think it's a 3.8 or a four inch even 
um, paddle tail bait that I purchased from Champlain Lures. And again, descriptions will be in the, in the, in the description below for all that. Um, so again, this is where I'm gonna be using up against riprap. I'm gonna be using this around any kind of flats that I come up on. So on the St. Lawrence, when I fish the St. Lawrence, there's a lot of deep water, but you'll get whole sections where it's like five or six foot flats. Um, and I like to find you know, flats that have some boulders and a little bit of dying weed in there and the bass will be cruising around those areas. So this is a great way to fish that, especially if it's secluded with a little less current, that's the way to go. So that is another setup. So the chatterbait, of course, chatterbait spinner baits would go on here. Okay, so next up we've got the uh, we've got the shaky head rig. All right, so this is an Akuma TCS rod as well. This is a seven foot rod, specifically labeled for shaky head. It actually says uh, all the TCS rods actually have their application written on them. So this is a shaky head. So for once, I'm using a rod for what it was made for, <laughs> which is pretty rare. And I've got a quantum smoke reel on here, and this will be the same thing. This is probably 25 uh, 25 pound braid or 30 pound braid. And because again, St. Lawrence, lots of rocks, zebra mussels, that sort of thing. I've got 15 pound fluorocarbon leader on here and I actually use a Brazex. So I use a Brazex for the uh, leader material and I've got a half ounce shaky head weight on here with the little twist lock and uh, that's what I'll use there. And to this guy, I will attach craws, I'll put uh, worms, you can put Senkos, the extra large sort of TRD uh, Ned baits all kinds of stuff on there. But usually what you'll find me put on here is a craw. And I'll show you some of the craws that I like to use. Um, you can even put a bandito bug on there, all kinds of good stuff. So shaky head, that, that'd be the next setup you make sure you bring with you. All right, last but not least, you know what? I don't know if I show you this rig, it's kind of a top secret rig. All right, fine, I'll show you. This is actually a rig that I kind of stole from Scott Martin, uh, the way he fishes, one of the styles that he likes to fish. Um, so first off, this is again a Shimano Crucial, medium heavy, um, and this will be a seven foot two or three, seven foot three, um, and I've got a uh, Shimano Cronarch CI4 on here, and uh, this is actually probably my, my most expensive reel. Um, and one of my older ones too, and this thing has taken a beating. It's used a lot. I use this a ton. All right, now I'm gonna show you what this guy's about. Let's get the camera zoomed in here a little bit and I'll go over the details. All right, so first of all, we've got a 35 pound braid on the reel, okay? And that then goes to fluorocarbon leader once again, and this is gonna be 15 pound Abrazex fluoro. Now the first thing I do is I put two bobber stoppers on. Now, I've shown this bait before, to be honest with you guys. I don't know, probably in one of my older videos. But we put on two bobber stoppers like this, okay? Slide those up, get them out of the way. And then I thread a skirted tungsten worm head like this. There you go. Now this is from uh, Mystery Tackle Box or Carl's Bait Shop, I guess they call it now. So that is a half ounce tungsten head with a skirt that you just thread on. And this is uh, Alabama Craw colored skirt. And the skirt comes included. You buy these in individual packs on Carl's. And then I've got a four aught hook on here. And hooked onto this hook is a Z-Man Swimmer Z, or Swimmers, or however you want to pronounce it. And of course, these are made out of that crazy Elastec material that you can stretch and last forever. In fact, uh, this one's been on here for months and it's caught a ton of fish and I mean it's still going. At this point I need to retie the knot or else I have a feeling the next fish I catch this thing's going to snap off. Um, so this setup is just insane. So you just get the skirt down to the bottom like that and then thread the bobber stoppers all the way to the bottom so that they're there so the head can't move around and there's your setup. And this thing, my friends, is deadly. DEADLY! And the reason why this particular setup is so deadly is because it is so versatile. You can use it in anything and everything. Deep water, shallow water, weeds, rocks, you name it, it works. I have two or three ways that I love to fish it. Um, one is to just cast it out, let it fall to the bottom, pop it off the bottom, let it fall back down, pop it off the bottom, let it fall back down. The colder the water gets, the longer the pauses. Um, another way is just to swim it through. So I'll just let it get to the bottom and I'll slowly swim it through and feel it bump off the rocks, bumping off any kind of debris, run it through the weeds, anything like that. And the third one would be just letting it go in the current. So I'll cast it up current and I'll, as I've talked about so many times, and I'll just slowly bring in the slack Keep, keep the slack out of the line and just let it roll through the current. The current's gonna bang 
banging off the bottom all over stuff, then all of a sudden you're gonna feel tap. You're gonna feel that like it's like a pencil tap in the rod. Reel down, bring in the slack all the way and set the hook and guess what? You're gonna have a nice beautiful smallmouth on the end of it because this thing is it's phenomenal. It's an amazing bait, an amazing combo that I started using a couple of years ago and it's just been awesome in the St. Lawrence. So there you go, That's the, that is the last setup. Okay guys, let's Ah, let's go through the bait bag. All right, so like I said, this is my Wild River uh, shore bag that I got a few years ago. And I mean, I have dragged this thing all over the place and it is still in amazing condition. There are no rips, no tears in it. Um, and, I mean, it looks brand new, there's no stains. I mean, I've, I've kept this in pretty good shape, but I mean, it's been dragged and thrown and fallen down like rocky faces and stuff and it's still just in amazing condition. So, phenomenal bag. So. What's really cool is you can open this compartment here and you've got all your all your bait. So what I'll do is I'm going to put this down and we're going to take out these trays and I'll show you what I've got in the trays. Um, and like I said, this is basically my, this is my basic setup. This is everything that I would bring with me if I was like, I had no choice. This is like, you have no room. All you can bring is one backpack. This is what I brought. Okay. So let me show you. Okay, so box number one, really quick, uh, jerk baits, okay? So another thing that I was telling you guys how you can just bring that one medium heavy rod and connect all kinds of things to it. Well, you can, one of the other things you can put on there are jerk baits. Jerk baits are insanely good for smallmouth in the fall. Just remember to be patient and to work it very slowly. You have two ways to do it. You can rip it once, let it sit there, give it another couple of rips, let it sit there for like five to 10 seconds sometimes if the water's cold enough. Like in October, you, you, you're barely moving these things. The other way to do it is you can give it a couple of twitches to get it down to the operating depth and just let the current carry it around. Let it, let it go for 20, 30 feet, give it one more little twitch, let it, you'll be surprised how it'll just float for 10 seconds on its own and then all of a sudden just get hammered. That's the best way to work those jerk baits for smallies. Uh, I've got a couple of extra um, chatter baits and blues and browns and chartreuse just in case the water is disgusting. And of course I've got all my extra weights in here. So I've got some extra shaky heads, I've got some extra Ned Rig hooks, I have the extra tube jig hooks because obviously you're going to go through, th through these like crazy. Guys, don't be afraid. If you're not getting stuck every once in a while with your tubes, you're not fishing them heavy enough or slow enough, okay? And uh, I've got some bobber stoppers and that's about it. And I've got some little weighted wacky rig hooks just in case it's really windy and I'm just not getting the casts I want um, with my uh, finesse rig that has no weight. I can add a little tiny 1 8 ounce weight on there or even a quarter ounce, uh, sorry, not a quarter, a 16th ounce uh, if I want to. So that's what's in the first tray. Okay, next tray is gonna be just jigs. I've got swim jigs, I've got all kinds of jig heads. I've got the extra um, tungsten heavy metal jigs with the skirts. So I got those in there and all kinds of different colors. Um, I've got some extra pre-rigged uh, jigs here with some craws, but I wanna show you guys the extra craws here. These craws are so awesome. So I will put a link in the description below to where you get these, okay? I'll, it's a guy on Facebook that makes them for me. And yeah, let me get up here. Check these out. Check out these craws. The, he actually uses, he threads little antennas in them. And the, uh, the claws float, so it comes up like this, and you just see these little antenna just moving a little bit. The fish go mental. Now, true story, I lent one of these to a friend of mine. I said, here, take this, give it a try. So he took this fishing. He called me up that night. He's like, you need to get me more of these. It got absolutely destroyed. He caught a bunch of fish on it. And by the time it was done, the claws were ripped off. The legs were gone. The antenna, all he had was like the little body part. So uh, he was like, please get me more. I felt like I was a drug dealer. Next case, pretty simple, crankbaits. I've got some uh, some square bills. You guys know I'm not a huge crankbait fan, but I do like, if, if it's really slow, if I'm just not finding the fish and I need to start power fishing, I will go ahead and throw on one of these. I've got some liquid mayhem in here. Um, right there, so a little bit of liquid mayhem. Just, it's more of a confidence thing than anything else. But what's really key here, guys, are these red crankbaits. So I've got a, I've got a lipless crankbait, I've got a square boat crankbait in these red and orange colors. Smallmouth love orange, okay? When in doubt, throw some orange on there. So these are super key in the fall. And I've also got some shad colors and things like that. And almost all of these are actually from Mystery Tackle Box, because like I told you guys before, um, Almost all of my Mystery Tackle Box stuff goes into my travel bag. So that's that. Uh, this last tray is all topwater stuff, so we don't have to pay attention to topwater because uh, it's a little too cold for topwater, so we won't bother with that. So that's it for the trays. Let's check out what kind of baits I brought. First off, here is, oh geez, what a mess. Okay, so first off, here's the uh, Seaguar Brazex. This is what I use here. 
So I've got, I've got this in 12, 15, and 20 pound versions, depending on what I'm fishing and all that good stuff. Um, on the other side, I've got drop shot weights, but up here, this is where the good stuff is. So in the top here, there's this big compartment that takes up pretty much half the bag, and in there I've got all my plastic baits. So let's take a look. So one little thing right on the top. So there, I did get some new baits that I wanted to try that recently came in, and the first one are the Saucy Swimmers from Guggen Baits. I did not get a chance to use these yet, but I'm looking very, very forward to using these um, instead of Kitech baits uh, for drop shot. These look absolutely amazing. Now Kitech make phenomenal baits, but these are way cheaper, like almost half the price. So um, at least I got these for almost half the price. So I'm looking very forward to trying these out. So Saucy Swimmers for drop shot, and I love these kind of two color combinations uh, where it's pale on one side and you've got the green on the top and this color is, ah, the, I think the label came off. Uh, yeah, the label came off this particular color, but uh, we have this color that we use a lot in Canada. It's called uh, Smallmouth Magic. So anything in that Smallmouth Magic color combo is awesome. Uh, same thing with these guys. This is uh, blue, what is this? Pro Blue Red, it's called, but it's the same principle. It's got like this pinkish white cast to the belly and then the darker top. So these looking really forward to trying it. So that's in there. Um, I've got more four inch paddle tail swim baits in black with blue flake. And that goes with the black chatter bait in case I hit muddy water. And let's see what else we've got. We've got Ned rig baits. So we've got the Guggen baits rattling Neds in here. Uh, we got more grass kickers. So this is the package of grass kickers I was telling you about from Z-Man. These are really, really good. And this particular color is called the deal. And my friends, it is the deal. All right, let's see, we've got some Senkos from Lunker Hunt. Again, I just really like anything with a contrast. Also, my secret favorite flavor of Senko is Copper with Copper Flake. These are amazing. Um, they're made by a company called First Mate Lures. It's actually a local company here in Canada that I buy these from. Really cool stuff. Uh, let's see, we got, wow, look at all my, we got saucy swimmers at the yin yang, look at them all. Well, they don't need any of those, throw that there. All right, this is a whole bag of revealer tubes. Now, this is my favorite color combination. Let me show you these, okay? So this is a black with blue flake, and the tail is contrasting a bright blue and red. So I don't know if you guys can see that, but this is just an awesome color combination, and they're loaded with salt. And you got more salt on this than a pack of McDonald's fries. Yeah, these things are the bomb, okay? So I got a whole bag of them. I just took a bunch of bags and I put them all in here into the Ziploc because I use so many. I gotta put this bag down, it's like weighs a ton. Here's another pack of Lunker Hunt revealer tubes. So this is in a green color and the, you can see here the contrasting color is a, like a bright green. Again, just this is one of my, this is my second favorite combo color actually. So this is, these are just phenomenal baits. And then another must have guys, this is a must have. Gotta have this in your bag. And those are Zoom Super Flukes, okay? Zoom Super Flukes. Do not leave home without them. So I've got two colors here. I've got the white, and I believe this is called Sexy Shad. Yeah, this is Sexy Shad. So again, I just like having two contrasting colors, but guys, this, I use these all the time for smallies. Um, I work them like a jerk bait. I just give them a couple of twitches, let it sit there, and, and then they just, it's just annihilation. So make sure you have some of these. And then for drop shot, of course, I, have, I love using all kinds of stuff on drop shots. I use paddle tails, I use worms, all kinds of things. So I showed you those uh, Guggen baits, the saucy swimmers that I really like, but I also love sort of these little flat tail style worms like this. And again, these are from First Mate Lures. But you can find all kinds of these. Uh, again, here's a different dark ones. Um, and you know, they look like a leech, which of course bass love. And uh, I know that, uh, was it Berkeley makes those Max Scent ones, the Max Sail flat, uh, flat tail worms, Max Scent. Those are absolute candy. I don't have any, and the last time I went to go get some, they were all out at the store. But those are like candy to bass, okay? You can't go wrong with that either. So those are phenomenal drop shot uh, baits. And uh, the last one we'll talk about, of course, is the shaky head. So I told you I like to put all kinds of things on the shaky head. Here are some of my favorites uh, that I'll use on a shaky head. So one of them is the Bandito Bug. 
uh, which works phenomenal. I love the bandito bug. I don't think very many people think of using it on a shaky head, but it works fantastic. I absolutely love it. So, uh, and this is, I think this is Alabama craw. Yeah, Alabama craw. And uh, Buddha, Buddha baits. So Buddha baits often come with mystery tackle box. Um, so these are like a power worm or like a paddle worm. What do they call these things? Is there actually a name for this? No, but it's a, it's like a power worm. Let me take one out and they, I mean, they stink. So that is the, you can see it's got that paddle tail on there. So this is a paddle worm. I mean, I'm holding it out here and it just reeks. <laughs> so these are actually phenomenal. So I will use that on a shaky head as well. And again, I just let the current do all the work for me in the river systems and on lakes. I just give it very slow twitches off the bottom. And I also love uh, these worms. These are worms from Charlie's Worms. Um, and I like these because they seem to be very robust. They're thin, but they, they, they're made out of this great material with phenomenal, it's a great balance between um, movement in the water and durability. So that's the Charlie's Worms here. There we go. So you can see it's got a thinned out main body, the fatter tail that likes to, that just moves around in the current all nice, and it's got the fatter main body so that you can get it onto the twist lock. And again, these are just phenomenal baits, love it. And then one more bonus bait, guys. You know, we talked about how, you know, I think what was my second thing I mentioned was the Ned rig. Uh, and I do love the, the Rattlin Neds, uh, the Rattlin Neds from Guggenbaits, but there is another one that I tried out this year that I love, okay? And this is the Z-Man Ticklers. Okay, these are the Z-Man Ticklers, and these are like the skirted Ned rigs with the little skirted, uh, little flared tentacles on the end. You can see that. And once again, I got them in the, my favorite color, the deal. So I tried these this year. Actually, no, sorry. Uh, yeah, I tried these for the first time this year, and I, I did not get a chance to use them as much as I wanted. But when I finally did get to, uh, to uh, take these out and give them a shot, it was the deal for real. I mean, it, it worked phenomenal. So I've got that color, and I've got this bright chartreuse that I use for, again, muddy water. Because here on the St. Lawrence, what happens is when we get a lot of wind and rain, uh, we get a lot of flow from the Ottawa River system that all comes towards Montreal and the water just becomes disgusting. So Lake of Two Mountains is upriver from us and Lake of Two Mountains is always full of muck anyway. So when there's a big flow from the, uh, from the, from the rain and the wind, the current just carries it all down. So that's why I always have sort of my more natural colors and then the really bright contrasting colors because on, on rainy days or the day after or even sometimes two, three days after it rained, it's just a mess. So so uh, yeah, so guys, the ticklers, these things are awesome as well. All right, guys, that's it. I got no more secrets to tell. That is everything that I use that I consider essential for smallmouth fishing, uh, especially obviously in the, uh, in the fall and in the very late summer. Like today is uh, like the first day of September. So uh, you know, that's gonna start happening now. So the next time I go fishing, I will literally bring all of this gear with me. This is what, so if I get a chance to record a video, you'll see on video, this is everything that I show you today is exactly what I'm using. So guys, thank you so much. I would love, guys, leave me a comment below. I would love to hear what are your favorite baits for smallmouth. You know, I get it. Some of you don't want to share the secrets with me. It's fine, but I would love it. You know, give me a comment. You know, you can be vague in general. You don't even have to say exactly what you use or what brand, but would love to hear what your secret success is. And uh, that's it guys. Thank you so much. Don't forget to like, it really helps build the channel when you click the like button and of course make sure you're subscribed if you're not subscribed by now I don't know what to tell you uh, so thanks so much guys get out there and fish and I promise you very very soon I'll be out there fishing again uh, things are starting to simmer down and you know me I never miss the fall bite that ain't happening so we'll have lots of great content coming up and we're even gonna try again for sturgeon pretty soon so guys thank you so much have a good one and we'll see you on the next video peace <music>